first of all, this demonstration is in solidarity with a demonstration that's going on in North Carolina. Everybody should know that our sisters and brothers in North Carolina are marching. In fact, I think they're continuing to march. They've been marching since this morning. And I think we need to send a very clear message to the news media and the world especially because it got asked to me, that we will not be divided by those young people who rebelled in Charlotte recently. Because you cannot equate the trashing of a bank or a broken bank window with the lives of somebody like Keith Lamont Scott, with Sandra Bland, with Corin Gaines, with any human being. And it cannot equate with the epidemic of racist police terror that is gripping this country. So who cares, and I won't say another word, about some bank window, or whether it gets trashed, or some police car, or the Omni Hotel? Because people will have to begin to feel uncomfortable when there's this kind of deep-seated white supremacy in our country that allows cops to kill with impunity, and I mean impunity. So I wanted to at least, before I say anything else, make it very clear that there is no equal signs between the destruction of property, whether it was a CVS on North Avenue, or whether it's the Bank of America and Charlotte. And I will say one other thing, because I have been in Charlotte, and I have sisters and brothers that I've worked with very closely with the People's Power Assembly and Workers' World Party. Charlotte is really the capital of Bank of America. It is a, a tiny C, small city, you know, of wealthy white folks. So when people talk about tearing up Charlotte, they are not tearing up their own communities. And when they talk about outside agitators, there are no outside agitators when we're talking about the whole surrounding county of people that have come into Charlotte because they're impacted every day, because it is a poor working class black and white people who work inside of Charlotte who make the money for Bank of America and the other big businesses. So there are no outsiders because Bank of America is international. So we will go wherever the struggle calls us. And today, actually, there was a call that went out for national support in North Carolina. But a lot of us couldn't get to North Carolina. So we decided we would hold a symbolic rally right here, downtown Baltimore, to express that. I want to end before turning the mic over to Sister Tawanda, who's far more eloquent than I am, by saying that we need deeper solutions to these problems. And we have begun to raise important questions like, why shouldn't the police departments be disarmed? Let's make it clear about gun control. I personally will support gun control only when the racist police are stripped of their guns and when the Klan and the neo-Nazis in this country can no longer carry guns, then yes, I'll be for gun control. But really, right now, we should disarm the police. But we should not only disarm the police, we must disband racist police in this country. Now, people may act like that's not possible, but it is possible. I think that Mamiya Abba-Jamal raised a very important demand. And while we haven't realized it yet, we have to start talking about it or else it'll never happen. And that is that we need community peace patrols, not racist police who are occupying the poor communities in Baltimore. What do I mean by community peace patrols? That means people who come from the community who until we can solve the rampant problems of violence, which are not, you know, more police will never solve those problems. We know that for a fact. And Baltimore is literally one of the top five cities that has the largest number of police per people. Yet we still have the highest murder rate. We also are a city that is so impoverished that our poverty rate is sky high. It's over a quarter of the people live in dire po poverty not just day by day, hand by hand, you know, the kind that all of us are living in. I'm talking about dire poverty. And until we can reverse the priorities and make people's lives 
empowered, where they have education, food, adequate housing, then we won't have an end to crime. And more police will not solve it. So what we really need is peace patrols of the kind that Mamiya Abu Jamal has proposed. So I want to just end with that. There are no halfway solutions. Body cameras are one thing. Okay, fine. No one's going to say, no, don't have a body camera. But we know in the hands of the police and the system that these cameras don't get used in the way that would be helpful. So right now we're demanding that we abolish police, the ICE, which by the way, if people don't know who ICE is, it is a terror arm that terrorizes our immigrant sisters and brothers and takes them off to jail and separates families. And of course, the other thing that hasn't been said a lot at these rallies, we have to abolish the Pentagon. Our enemy is not abroad. Our enemy is not in Iraq or Afghanistan or Syria. Our enemy is right here with the Bank of America, with all the other bankers and big business. That is the real enemy. Racism, white supremacy, that is the enemy. Sexism, homophobia, all these isms, they are the real enemy, not the people. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Wanda. But yeah, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. You don't have to vote for me. We only ran the election as a referendum against the poverty and racism of Baltimore City and of the, the terror of the police department. So we might win anyhow, and if we win, I will say this. We don't believe that elections will change this country. But if for some reason some of us get into a smaller office, then I'll tell you the first thing I would do if I was in City Hall. I would call for a mass of people's assembly, and I would invite to Wanda. Andre, Helen, all the sisters and brothers to come into my office and sit in City Hall until we actually can enact real change. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.